Today we're upgrading my Ferrari Red F80 M3's charge cooler with, you guessed it, a Ferrari Red charge cooler from CSF. Hey, this is Brian. Thanks for watching Keys Motorsports. If you like our videos, give us a thumbs up. Make sure to subscribe and check us out at keysmotorsports.com. That is right. We are installing a custom-made Ferrari Red charge cooler from CSF on my F80 M3. Now, we have a video that walks through the entire process, so we're not going to go necessarily step-by-step. Step. We're going to kind of cruise through it like you've seen a video before. But if it's your first time, this video will be very helpful for you as well. Now, to begin this project, the first thing you need to do is you need to remove the carbon strut race if you haven't done so already. Now, we just got done filming a dyno video on this inventory intake, so ours is already off. If you haven't taken it off before, we have some other videos that we can reference, but there's basically, there's three 10 millimeters up there. There's a little fastener over here, a little fastener over here. Then there's three 13 mils on each side. There's the same on the other side, and there's just two in the front that secure it. And there's one little 10 mil. So once you take all that off, you can just move that over and set it to the side. Once you've done that, you're going to need to release your charge pipe clamps. Now, I have aftermarket ones from Evolution Raceworks. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to disconnect this clamp here right there. I'm gonna make it nice and loose and same thing over here. And then we'll talk about the next step. Once you've done that, you can pull them off. Pull off this side. Okay, just like that. Then what you need to do is take this little clip on the sensor. You can do it all from the top. You can just release it and then just push it down just like that. Or you can reach your hand down and push on the clip. Um, I found, especially when you're working from the top, it's much easier to just do it that way. Then take your flathead and we're going to release the first hose clamp on top of our charge cooler. So you can see I have this super loose. That's, that's gonna be a major trick to getting this one off. You wanna make sure that you get it crazy loose so that you can easily get this this rubber off. Now, speaking of this rubber silicone hose here, sometimes when you go to take these off of your actual charge cooler, it is insanely tight. I don't know if it's the heat, but it sometimes feels like it's glued on. So what I found is if you get one of these really big pick tools, what you can do is you can, kind of at a bad angle, but what you can do is you can just work your way in here and then you can just work your way around. And then what that's going to do is that's going to loosen it up. Okay, I'm not really at the best angle right now. But if you do that, when you actually go to pull it up like this, it's gonna be a thousand times easier. Okay. All right, it's nice and loose now. Next, what we're going to do is we are going to get some of this coolant out of here. Now, it's very important that you do this when the car is nice and cool. You don't wanna do it hot because you will get burnt really bad if you try to do that. Um, we're, we're trying to do this as DIY home friendly for you as we can. I don't normally use a turkey baster, but I got this at Walmart just for you. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna suck out as much coolant with this as I can. I'm just gonna put it in my, my jug here. I'm just gonna put a towel down so I don't drip too much. All right, so at this point, we have pretty much sucked all of the coolant that we can possibly get out. And just for reference, it's like an eighth gallon. So um, this is a good amount of coolant in there. So after we've done that, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to re-seal our container here. And if you spilled any coolant, we just got a couple drips. You wanna make sure that you clean that up. After you've done that, if you can look over here, this clamp right here, this, um, this aluminum piece, I mean, is actually attached to the CSF cooler. So you want to take this, this line, and you want to you want to gently move that off of there. There's also this wire that's snapped in. Now at this point, we're about to pull off some coolant lines, and just so things don't get messy, what I would recommend, CSF typically includes little caps. 
I would remove these caps and we're gonna use them on the new one so that when we take it out, we don't spill coolant everywhere. So then what I'm going to do, I'm going to start removing these coolant lines. We're gonna to go to the, the top one here, take a pick tool and you pull out this little clip just like so. And you're just gonna wiggle it off. And then you can snap back in place. When we go to reinstall it, all you need to do is just pop it back on. Okay, so I'm just gonna put a towel over this and just pull it over here just for now. Um, next, we're going to need to get this clip off. Again, we're gonna put a little towel under because it's possible there, there's still some coolant. And then we're gonna pull this one off as well. So I'm just gonna put a towel under here. And there shouldn't be a ton in it. But just so you're you're expecting a, a little spillage there. Okay, so as you can see, not a ton. I'm just gonna try to dump a little bit out just so it doesn't spill much. Just gonna put another towel down here. And then once I'm at this one, typically what I do is make sure that all of these things over here are unclipped and you can start to lift up. And basically what my plan is, is I'm going to take this off and lift it up just so nothing spills out. Um, if you haven't done so already, you can also take your little cap and just put it on the top there. Okay. So you can see a little coolant, but nothing's really spilling out. We're gonna put that there. And I can start to move all my little towels here. So if you look at this bracket right here, you'll see that it's held in with a grommet. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna lift it up off the grommet like that. And we already have our J pipe loose. We have our, our charge pipes loose. So basically you're just gonna keep lifting up like this. Make sure that nothing is getting snagged or nothing is in the way. Okay. Up, and you can start to twist it out of there. And just go like that and pull it out to the side. Then what I would recommend doing is just dumping out the rest of the coolant that's inside of it. So whether you're gonna store it or maybe it's damaged and you need to get rid of it, you always wanna get the coolant out and properly dispose of it. All right, so now we have our charger that was on the car. We have our charge cooler from CSF over here. And basically we need to transfer over the reservoir, all of these brackets and whatnot, and this little hose, um, a sensor, and just a couple odds and ends. So with that, let's start over here with the sensor. Now it's very important to note, this is, first off, it's a T30, uh, but it's very important to note, you don't wanna reuse the same screws because these are made to go into plastic where CSF and the other companies, they use um, machine screws. So if you try to install these, you're just gonna strip it out. So always make sure you use the screws that are provided. Okay, so we're gonna take our, our sensor. I'll spin this around so you can see where we're going with it. It's gonna go in the same orientation that it was. Okay, so we want to see like that. And then not only does CSF include all of the hardware you need, they actually give you a little T30, which is pretty cool. Especially considering all these bolts are T30. <laughs> Okay, now we're going to swap over this bracket here. So again, everything is so nice because it's T30 on the old and also on the new. So we'll remove this. Okay. Pop it over here. Okay, so now we can flip over our charge cooler and you're going to need a little set of pliers here to pry on this. Make sure it doesn't slip off and crush, crush your finger there. I am going to just move these, move this guy out of the way. For now, we're gonna pull this off. Now, same thing, if this isn't coming off with ease, you can always use a pick tool. Just very carefully go around it. Make sure that nothing is, um, is getting pinched or you're not accidentally popping a hole in anything, and then you'll be able to pop it off. So let me grab my, my pick tool. Okay. OK, 
Okay, perfect. I don't want to do it too much because I don't want to risk putting a hole in anything. Okay, once you've done that, there are two T25s up here. Why they switched up the size, I do not know. But just make sure you have the T25 handy. Then once you've done that, we're gonna flip it over one more time. Watch out for stray coolant, because it kind of stinks. Okay, and there's a T30 over here. There's one over here, and then there's one final one over here. So then you can take this entire piece, transfer it over, like so. And what I'm going to do first, I'm going to take three of these screws here. I'm going to lightly thread them in just so this is held in place. I don't like to tighten them fully at this point and I'll show you why in just a second once I get these all started. And the reason is if you look over here you're going to need to take these two skinny bolts and feed them through like that. So there's one and that's gonna get pulled down once you put the nut on. And then here's the second one. So let me go grab a, a Phillips head screwdriver, and then I also need another size open-ended wrench, and then we'll tighten those down. Okay, so once you have these far enough through, like that, you're gonna take the nut, and it's just an eight mil. So we'll thread that one on here. And then we will thread this one on here. Now, once those are lined up, we can tighten these. Then we'll flip it over one last time. We'll remove our cap in the back here. Slide this over just like that, and then move that clamp back up. Perfect. Okay, once you've done that, I am just going to put these caps on my OEM one so that no junk gets in there while it's in storage, in case we ever need it again. And then we're ready to install the new cooler. Now one of the first things that I'm going to do, I'm going to fish out my sensor and just push it over here so that it's easily accessible when I'm ready for it. Then we're going to put the, um, the cold side in right there and then on the on the bottom here if you if you haven't seen the three locations that this is held in are these three grommets so the first one you saw the other two you couldn't see and i forgot to tell you where they were but if, if you look at your your charge pipe that's closest to the firewall it's pretty much right in front of that one all right so with that let's take this over here like this now while you're while you're focusing over here don't forget this area here because you don't want to pinch any wires or anything. So I'm going to carefully navigate this. Look at that yellow spider. That's new. Please don't kill us, Mr. Spider. <laughs> okay. All right, so I'm going to start to just wiggle down there into place. Okay, then while I'm here, I'm going to take this line and I'm going to just pop it up until it clips on. And again, you, you snap these shut, and you slide it on, and you can take this and you slide it on. So now that we've done that, we don't have to worry about any more coolant spilling at all. So now it's a little bit of a juggling act here. Basically, I'm gonna to try to line up this grommet over here Make sure that I'm not pressing on the charge pipes over here. And I'm going to try to press that in down there. Which is not very difficult. You just have to be aware of everything going on at once. Okay. So that's on. That's on. Can you get these charge pipes? Okay. That one's going to go on fine. We are off to a good start. Just make sure your clamp is where you want it positioned. Then we'll slide that in there. 
Same thing with this one. I want the, the clamp position upwards. Okay, all the grommets are securely in place. If you look over here, our silicone hose is all the way up. That's ready for tightening. Okay, then you can take your, your connection over here, feed that up, and clip it into place. Next, before I forget about it, I'm going to do the hose clamp down here. Then you can tighten the hot side of your charge pipes. Now the next part of the process is to refill everything with coolant. So when you do this, I would recommend just going to your local BMW dealer and getting BMW coolant. Um, you do need to cut this with 50% coolant and then it's also 50% distilled water, which you can get pretty much at any supermarket or any store. And then you're gonna take this and then just keep filling it up. So I didn't say it earlier, but um, we pre-blend ours before we actually um, pour them. So I've already cut it with 50% water. Actually, that's, <laughs> that's where we got this jug from. <laughs> and when you're filling, there's a little gauge there. You wanna get it so it's just submerged. And then I'll show you how to bleed the system. Okay, so right now it's all the way full. And then you have pretty much two different ways that you can bleed the system. The first way is if you have a vacuum pressure bleeder. Now that's what we use when we're in the shop um, just because it's a thousand times faster. But if you, if you have one of those, you can just hook it up here. You, you suck out all of the air and then replace it with fluid and you can literally do it in about five minutes. Um, if you don't have that, what you can do is BMW has a system already in place in the car where you can actually activate the coolant pumps to bleed the system. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you how to do that. Now, if you are going to be using the BMW bleed procedure, you are going to want to have your car hooked up to a battery charger, which we're going to do right now. Now, what's very important about choosing a battery charger is, for example, my F80 has a lithium battery. You need a lithium charger. So this is the, the NOCO Genius G26,000, um, and it's available on Amazon. We'll have a link in the description, but this is what we use for all um, cars that come in with a, a lithium battery. All right, to start the electronic bleed, you're gonna press your start stop button one time just to put the car in accessory mode. Then over here, you wanna set your fan speed to one, and then you wanna put, put it as hot as it will go. Okay. Over here, you wanna turn your headlights on and then you wanna press and hold the accelerator down as far as it goes. You wanna hit that little kick down button for about 10 seconds, and then you're going to start to hear your water pumps kick on. So as we mentioned, it takes about 11 or 12 minutes to fully run through the bleed process. And something I didn't mention earlier is it takes about five or six minutes to actually get started. So if you have your foot down, your accelerator down for 10 seconds, you get out of the car and you're like, what the heck, it's not working. Just give it five minutes or so. I don't know why there's such a delay, um, maybe it's in case someone did it unintentionally. I'm not really sure why. Um, but once you do that, you'll be able to hear all of your pumps running. Another thing you can do is if you take off your cap, you're gonna be able to hear it. Or if you just put your hand on the line, you're gonna feel the fluid going through the line. Once it's done that, you can re-top it off with coolant and then we're gonna do the bleed one more time. Now, like I said, this is definitely the at-home way to do this. Um, in a shop environment, you typically use something like a vacuum bleeder but this is gonna work great if you're doing it on your driveway. So as you can probably hear, this is what it's gonna sound like. I'll see if I can get my mic over here. So it's pretty noticeable. And again, if you hold your hand here, it's 100% without a doubt, you're gonna feel all the fluid flowing through, but you're gonna hear it because it's really loud. And that's how you install a charge air cooler on your F80, your F82, or your F87. So it works on the M3, the M4, and also the M2 competition. For any of the parts or tools that we use in today's video, be sure to see the links in the description. Once again, my name is Brian. Thanks for watching Keys Motorsports. If you like our videos, give us a thumbs up, make sure to subscribe, and check us out at keysmotorsports.com. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.